So suppose in the news you hear tuition is expected to increase 7% next year. If tuition this year was $1,200 per quarter, what will be next year? So there's a couple ways that we could think about this. One way would be to say that uh, if we're going to add an additional 7% uh, on top of the tuition, then next year, next year will be our original 100% plus an extra 7%, or in other words, 107% of this year's. So in other words, our tuition this year was 1200. Let's find 107% of that $1200. And of course, usually we don't actually multiply by the percent. We go ahead and rewrite it as a decimal. We go ahead and multiply. We come up with next year's tuition will be $1,284 uh, per, oops, per quarter. Now, th another way we could have done this would be to say that 7% of 1,200, in other words, we could have started by just figuring out what the increase was going to be. So we could have said $1,200 times 7% uh, is $84. In other words, the tuition is going to increase by $84, and then the tuition this year plus the increase gives us the expected tuition for next year. And that'd be another way to approach the same problem. Okay, here's another problem. The value of a car dropped from 7400 to uh, 100 dollars to $6,800 over the last year. What percent decrease is this? So let's figure out first off how much the actual value decreased. Uh, if we take the new price minus the old price, we see that the price dropped by $600. So a $600 decrease. Now, usually when we talk about changes, it's easiest to talk about the absolute value of the change, which in this case would be $600, and we call this an absolute change. This is the actual change in absolute value, the actual change from one year to the next. So we had a $600 decrease, but we're really interested in the percent change. Um, and so we need to take this out of the starting amount. Now, this is really important uh, when we talk about changes, relative changes. We need the the absolute change, the absolute change divided by the starting quantity. So our change was 600, but that needs to be relative to our starting quantity. In this case, we dropped from 6,700, so it makes sense to count 7,400 as what we call the base of our percent. Now, base ends up being really important, as we'll see later, but uh, for now, we'll just say 600 out of 7,400. If we divided that, we would get uh, 0.081, which is an 8.1% decrease. And again, this is what we call a relative change. And absolute changes and relative changes are two different ways to describe how something's changed, and both have their value. Uh, oftentimes, though, the relative change is more useful to see sort of how big of a change it is, uh, because it describes that change relative to the starting amount.